Hey game designers, uh, in this video we are going to teach you how to make uh, what you see here, which is a secret layer uh, in the sky. Uh, we're going to teach you the basics uh, of Game Fruit, which will include the basic toolbars that you see here, the layer window, which you see here, the uh, building terrain and making customized terrain like you see here, uh, and building moving tiles. So let's go ahead and click play and kind of see what we're trying to make here. So what we're trying to do is create terrain because these terrains were did not come with the kit. And we're creating moving tiles. And, and we're creating a little secret layer in the sky. Okay. And as you can see, the moving tiles can also go diagonally. So now that we see what we're going to head toward, let's go ahead and make this. So we're going to go to file and well, whatever you have here, just make sure you save it. Um, but let's go ahead and make a new game. So when you first log into Game Fruit, you're likely to see this um, interface, which is the da their dashboard. We're going to click on new blank game. Now that we have a new blank game, you can see here that it's very barren here. There's not much to, sh to see. We're going to start with the kit. So you're going to click on try our new beginning tutorial. Okay. And once this panel pops up, we're going to click on let's go. Okay. It's going to load up their basic kit. The first thing I want to show you guys is the start screen here. Okay. So these are the three screens or the three scenes you will see in the game. The first one is the game fruit controls. The second one is the actual playable level. And the third one is the game over screen. Uh, in this tutorial, we're mainly going to be working on screen number two, the actual playable level here. Let's talk about the tools real quick. The first tool is the uh, object select tool. So you can click on objects like the player, like this dialog box here, like this background. Uh, please notice that you cannot click on the individual tiles uh, in the terrain. And that's because these are not objects. Okay. When you click on an object, it will show uh, where it exists in terms of what layer it is in. This player is in the player layer. And these are its properties. And it, quite a lot of properties here, but you know where you can find them now. If I click on this little dialog box here, it's inside the story point layer. Okay. Uh, now that we're talking about layers, what you see here are all the visual layers of Game Fruit. Now, um, basically how this layer system works is the further you are on top, the later you are drawn, which means you will always appear in the front. So the victory point will appear in the front, followed by moving tiles, followed by the player. And if you scroll all the way down, it makes sense that the background is at the bottom of the list and therefore the furthest in the back. Okay. The paint tool is used to draw terrain. You can see right here the seven prefabs brushes that you can use. If you try to paint with it, like right now, you can see that it does not allow me to paint because the tiles must be placed on a tile map, which means when you try to paint terrain, you must be on a layer that has grids or tile maps. As you can see here, there are two of them that have tile maps. We're going to use the one that's the grass terrain. So if I want to paint, I need to go to the grass terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a couple of quick terrains here. So I'm going to just kind of Go as quickly here, try to make a few. Okay. Now, if there's something I don't like, suppose that I can't imagine my player making it from this jump to this jump is too high. You can always use the opposite of the paint brush tool, which is the eraser tool. So I'm going to go here and erase this and erase this um, when I realize that um, it's probably too high of a jump. So something like that is looks like it can be done. Okay. Um, the next tool is the eraser tool. So we talked about the eraser tool. We can erase terrain. 
and that means any terrain. So I can actually come here and erase this terrain as well. Okay, I can likewise paint it back. And you can see how the terrain kind of snaps together if they are adjacent. Let's talk about the text box tool. The text box tool allows you to add text to your game. So if there's a message you want to show to your players, um, you can use the text box tool. Now remember, everything that you do in terms of graphics that appear on the screen have to exist in some layer. It does not make sense for me to put the text box inside the grass terrain layer. So let's go ahead and teach you guys how to make a layer. So I'm going to click this plus sign up here. It gives me two options, new, new layer and new tile map. Let's go ahead and make a new layer here. And it's going to put it um, by default at the very top. You can double click to rename the layer, or if the double click doesn't work, just click on the triple dot here and click on rename. And I think the layer that it makes sense to put on is the user interface layer. Okay, user interface and overlay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a text box now and click where I want to draw the text. And I'm just gonna put a simple message like starts here. Okay, and I can change the color if I like. Okay, and right now you can see that this start here is in the UI overlay. Now, if you ever want to see how many objects are in the UI overlay, you can click this drop down menu and you can see that the text exists inside the UI overlay. I can do this for other layers as well and see that there's a flag in that layer. There are two objects inside the moving tire layer, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, hand tool here. Uh, the hand tool allows you to pan. So suppose that I want to see the rest of the map. I can click on the pan tool, left click and drag and drag the screen so I can see the other parts of the level. The next tool I want to show you is the uh, map down here. So suppose I want to see the entire map uh, as a whole. I can click this minus sign down here and it allows me to see uh, more of the map or even if I want the entire map. Okay. And likewise, I can click on plus. I can click on where on the map I want to see. Okay. And uh, that does it for the basic tools. Now, what you see here to the left are prefabs, which are basically assets that were created for you with the kit. And that's where we're going to do next is use some of the prefabs. So before we make a prefab, let's go ahead and talk about what our goal was. And our goal is to create a secret layer. So again, I'm going to try to create the secret layer. I need to go on one of these tile map layers. I'm just going to choose the grass terrain. I can likewise choose the castle. It doesn't make much of a difference in this instance. I'm going to click on my paint tool and I'm going to paint myself uh, a secret layer up here. So I'm a big fan of Mario Brothers. So I'm just going to make a traditional secret layer that looks something like this. And uh, let's make sure that it's, uh, I like symmetry. So let's try to create something that has some symmetry here. And uh, so it looks like I'm, I got some symmetry going on. Okay, we'll start with something like this. Maybe I need to put one extra brick here so that my player can actually jump up on this. Maybe this is too high and my player can't fit through this narrow. So that looks about right. Um, okay, so if this is my secret layer, let's go ahead and use a text box real quick. So if I'm going to add a text box to kind of tell my player that they made it to a secret layer, I'm going to go back to the UI overlay, click on my text box, and create a quick text box here. So secret layer. Um, you can use a select tool to center your text. So once I'm done making the text, I can kind of click on it with my select tool. And likewise, I can kind of double click with my select tool and actually come back in here and change the way it looks. So say I want the text to be bigger. Maybe I want it to be like a green color. And again, I can use my select tool and move it around to make it look centered. Okay, so we have this secret layer now. Um, 
Now, the next thing I wanted to teach you guys in this tutorial is how to build moving tiles. So in order to get to this secret layer, I probably can't jump from here to here. Maybe I can, but let's give our player a chance with a moving tile. Now, as you would suspect, when we made our layer, we used the paint tool. The paint tool paints basically like you can think about like a canvas. Okay. But an object like a moving tile or a moving platform is not static like the secret layer or the terrain. It's an object that is constantly moving. So you don't actually put the moving tiles inside of these um, tile maps. Instead, you're going to put them in a layer like moving tiles. So you can see here that the game already has two, cre uh, already two moving tiles. So if I click on this right here, like this asset, and I click this little button up here, it'll let me center that object. So if I want to go to this object, I click on this button, I see where it is. So there's already two um, moving tiles. I also want you to pay attention to this. This moving tile has a tag of moving tile dash two. If I go to this object and set and see it over here, this moving tile has a different unique tag, just moving dash tile. And this is important because sometimes switches like this will activate or deactivate a moving tile. So you have to make sure that every moving tile you have has a unique tag. So let's go ahead and figure out where we can find moving tiles. If you scroll down on the prefab window, you will see moving tiles down here. To take a moving tile and put it into your game, you simply drag and click. But before we do that, let's consider what layer we are in. Right now we have the moving tiles layer highlighted. So I think it makes sense that we click on moving tiles and we're going to place the moving tile object in the layer called moving tiles. So just go ahead and pick one. I'm going to drag one right about here and go ahead and look at the properties. So when I dragged and dropped this moving tile, there are several properties that a moving tile has, including that one that we just talked about, which is its tag. Now I already have one called moving tile and moving tile dash two, keeping with the same naming convention, I'm going to call this one moving tile dash three. Now you can see here that it has the five basic properties, which is the X and Y location, the X and Y scale and zero rotation. Now the extra added features because it's a moving tile is the active and deactive status, the end location, which is X and Y, the tag, which we already talked about, and the speed. So let's say I want this moving tile to kind of go up and down. Maybe I want to go all the way down here and then all the way back up. So in case players that fall down um, and didn't couldn't make this jump, we can still enter our secret layer. So to do this, I need to give it a number, okay, an X and a Y coordinate. Now there are many ways to figure out the location, but the important thing that you must understand about the reference system inside of game fruit is that they use the upper left hand as the reference so for example if i want this thing to go straight down here i have to think about where do i want the upper left hand corner and that is where i want to figure out what coordinate this is now to figure out what coordinate this is the layers and property window has this nice tool right here it tells me exactly what X and Y coordinate my mouse cursor is. So let's say I want it roughly around here. And you can see that the X coordinate is 931 and the Y coordinate is 763. Now, um, if you understand your mathematics, if I want this object to go vertically, then I don't really need to change the X position. The X position just stays the same. And the Y position is the one I need to change. So if I want the upper left hand corner of this moving tile to be somewhere around here, I'm just going to round it to about 775. Okay. So I'm going to change the Y to 775, which you can see here is about a 720 pixel drop. Now you'll also learn and realize that 
the x value increases as I go left to right, and the y value increases as I go up to down. Okay, so know that numbers that are bigger are to the right, and numbers that are bigger for the y values are going down. So likewise, um, I'm gonna, let's talk about the x position. Like I said, if you're trying to move vertically, your x coordinate does not change. I will go 929. I will hit the play button and let's see if my moving tile that I created is going up and down. So you can see that our text is working. You can see that our terrain is working and you can hit the down arrow and kind of look you can see that our moving platform is moving perfectly vertical. Okay. Now you can always edit the start and end positions if you like, right? That's just you and what you determine is best for your game, but this is how we do it. Now let's do quickly another example of moving platform and make one that goes diagonally. So suppose that the end of the map is somewhere over here with this gate and I want to make a platform that goes from here all the way down here. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit, take a look at it a little bit easier here. So I'm gonna make a platform that goes from here all the way down here. So again, before I drag and drop my moving tile, I wanna make sure that I'm in the moving tile layer. I'm just gonna grab one, place it right here. And then I just want to determine where I want the end to be. So let's say I want the upper left of this moving tile to be somewhere around here. Based on my coordinates, uh, I'm around 2240 and 732. So I'm just going to round everything. So let's go 2230 and 730. Okay. And remember that, again, moving tiles should have their own unique tag. This one was moving tile. This one was moving tile dash two. The one that we made earlier was moving tag dash three. This one is going to call it moving tile dash four so that they all have their own unique title. Now I'm gonna leave everything else the same. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if I was able to accomplish my goal of creating two moving tiles. You can see that it was going all the way down. In case I fall, I can come back and still get access to my secret layer. And now you can see that this moving tile is moving diagonally. So all you need is to give it a end location and it looks about good. It doesn't collide with anything. So that's pretty good. And that does it for this tutorial guys. So we covered how to the basic tools, we cover the layer window and we covered building terrain and how to build moving tiles. Okay. And I'll see you guys next video. Oh, before we do that, let's go ahead and save. So go ahead and go to file here. When you have saved uh, your progress, make sure you save your game. So we're gonna click on save game as, and we're just gonna call it tutorial, okay? So as you go through these tutorials with us, let's go ahead and use the tutorial um, name project so that we can always come back and build off of this tutorial. Go ahead and click save. Once it saves, your file will be saved to the cloud and you're welcome to just exit the program. So I'm going to click the X here and we are done. See you guys next video.